All right, hey folks, just watch the movie Paul, Apostle of Christ in theaters. It was fantastic, first off. There's always a, a little bit of fear I have. It's like, oh, a Christian movie. It's going to be cheesy with B-rate acting. It wasn't that at all. It was very, very good acting. Uh, Jim Caviezel had played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ before, and so when he first came on the scene as Luke, a physician who wrote the Gospel of Luke a couple thousand years ago, it's a little confusing. I'm like, Jim, Ca Jim Caviezel, but that's Jesus, but... Anyway, after you got over that uh, initial kind of like, hey, uh, it was a really, really good movie. Good acting, good costumes. It, it, it was it was good enough in, in its entirety that I could kind of go there and be with them and fully invest in the story without any cheese or un, uh, unrealistic stuff. For historical fact is really, really important to me as a guy who studied church history exhaustively with looking at both secondary and a lot of primary sources. I've spent countless hours reading church history, so I, I'm going to pick up on that. Like when it first opened up, it says uh, Saul of Tarsus, or uh, Saul of Tarsus, who is known as Paul to the Roman world. A lot of people think his name was changed. It wasn't changed. He was just known as different names to different groups of people. And I'm like, right off the bat, I'm like, they did their homework. Way to go, guys. And so for me, just reading all uh, all kinds of stuff, I was really appreciative that they did it good uh, did good work. Now, if you guys are anti-Christian, that's all a bunch of hocus-pocus stuff. Cool. Okay, fantastic. It's still a really good movie that's filled with good historical fact. And if you want to throw out all the supernatural stuff and still just enjoy some of the most fascinating history as great 20th century uh, historian, one of the greatest historians who is absolutely an atheist, Will Durant, would say, you know, the first century in the life of Jesus, whose life we really understand, uh, it, it constitutes some of the most fascinating history in all Western, you know, uh, in the Western world. In incredible stuff the dude split time into. I mean, that something crazy was happening in the first century, and one of the most influential men of all time, a personal hero of mine, was this dude who na who was named Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, who lived a couple thousand years ago. Now, we know more about the general life outline of Paul than we know of a lot of, uh, lot of ancient personages of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates. We are far more sure about the life of Paul and the details surrounding him than we are of those ancient personages. So this, we, we really can know a lot of really, really good history about him, his general life, his uh, whatever. Uh, if you don't know, just uh, some general parameters, uh, Paul uh, hated Christians. He went around, he was responsible for the murder of a lot of their, their persecutions. Uh, so, uh, and then he had this like one inexplicable 180 change where all of a sudden he joined the movement and with that men in the first century was, ah, you're relegated now to a life of absolute torture and eventual death. All right, so the movie opens up in the first century with Emperor Nero, who ruled Rome, hating the Christians. He'd be one of the very first uh, emperors that would come and uh, who would really hate Christians and just start killing them. Uh, the, the persecutions that would come across the Christians in the next few centuries under guys like D.C and Diocletian, uh, Valerian, Marcus Aurelius, they're just getting started. I mean, hundreds of thousands of Christians would be flayed alive, whether it's little girls and uh, kids being ripped out of their mothers while they were still alive. Terrible, terrible, torturous type things would be uh, done to them. This movie started out with a terrible persecution where Emperor Nero would take Christians, he'd impale them on stakes, and then he would uh, wrap them in wax, light them on fire so that they would illuminate their gardens as they burned to death while he was having little parties and stuff. Or they'd, uh, you know, uh, have games, which meant, you know, like, uh, you know, they the Christians would die under the amusement of uh, spectators, whether they were being ripped apart by wild beasts or slowly tortured or killed by gladiators, stuff like that. That was indicative of the persecutions that was happening. So uh, it opens up with Paul, one of the, oh, the great Paul of history. Uh, Paul was amazing, wrote 13 New Testament books that we know of, uh, and is one of the most influential people of all human history. More is ascribed to this dude. The, the dude was just, man, he's got warrior poet ethos written all over him. If this guy had to have been the, one of the toughest dudes that ever walked the planet in just terms of the guy was beaten within an inch of his life five different times with whips, like one more lash kind of kills you type of deal, three different times with rods. Uh, just uh, He was stoned once, which is a death sentence. And no matter what, you had to imagine he must have been so gnarled up, like ugly as a troll, looked like David Allen Coe, but just scars, missing teeth. 
you know, blotched, whatever, because he just got tortured so often. And regardless of all the torture, he's a dude that stood up for conviction. He's like, I'm like, I look at his life and I'm like, yeah, I'm not like Paul. Yeah, I've gone through some suffering in my life, but nothing like that. And what do you have to, how much do you have to believe something to literally run toward such torture. It looks like masochism. It looks like madness. And maybe that's kind of uh, what it looked like to the Roman world, who would killing Christians, and though they wouldn't recant and take on the religious pluralism of the day in all the surrounding countries, and instead they would say, no, uh, you know, Jesus alone is Lord, and then they would die for that belief, as, as people don't die for stuff they're not sure of, and yet we surely have eyewitnesses in the first century, and then hundreds of thousands of martyrs that would come over the centuries after, absolutely sure, unto death, to torture, and so that's what it kind of is wrapped around. And so Paul has garnered my respect, and out of all the people of all ancient history, he's one of the top you know, a couple, few folks that if I could have a lunch with one dude, that would be him. Uh, and I would just hope he could somehow speak English, uh, which he couldn't. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so uh, I wanted to really quickly talk about a few real influ uh, real powerful scenes. They're not going to be really spoiler alerts. One kind of, sort of, but it was with Luke. Luke is meeting with uh, Paul throughout the movie. Paul is on death row throughout the whole movie in Rome, waiting execution. And Luke, the great physician of his day, he's a medical doctor, real affluent and very well-educated Greek, who wrote the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke in the uh, Bible's New Testament. Anyway, so that dude is visiting with Paul to kind of get his last testament, which would become the book of Acts in the New Testament. Really cool stuff to see all this stuff kind of how did the history get there? And so anyway, really, really cool stuff. So um, anyway, there's this really, really powerful scene where Luke is now imprisoned himself, and there's all these people around him, women, children, uh, dads, and they ask Luke, who's kind of sitting, sitting up against a wall and kind of like an egg, and they're like, they don't tell us what's going to happen here. Do you know what's going to happen? And everybody kind of leans in and it goes silent. And Luke says, tomorrow there will be games, which meant, you know, persecutions. They're feeding you to lions tomorrow. And everybody just, you know, gasps and shrieks and they're terrified as you and I would be. This really happened. This this kind of stuff, This these uh, these games to feeding little kids to lions for the entertainment of uh, the, the masses. So uh, anyway, and he stands up and now he goes into full on comfort mode. And he says, listen, listen to me. There will be pain, but only for a moment. And after that moment, you meet Jesus, uh, in, in, you know, face to face where there's no more pain anymore. And that was just, man, I just lost it. I'm kind of like, man, that's my family. That's my legacy from history. Those warrior poets that went before me who's standing on conviction, ready to die. And I mean, just, man, that's power, right? And so I really just, that resonated with, with me. Some other uh, kind of moments of uh, Paul's last words to Luke where he says, uh, uh, you know, they're saying their final goodbyes. They'll never see each other on this side of uh, heaven again. And he says, uh, we will meet again uh, on a new road for to live as Christ and to die as gain, quoting from Philippians 1. And then the movie closes with uh, quotes from uh, First and Second Timothy kind of put together. So uh, anyway, it was an incredible movie. Go see it. Go see it two or three times and then buy it on DVD and give it away to your friends. So fantastic. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe and hit that notifications uh, bell. Share, comment, like. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.